Hello, my name is Sean Conley from Epic Games, and today I wanted to show you a little bit about the remote control plugin for Unreal Engine. So the first thing we want to do, if we go up here to plugins, if you type remote control, you want to load the remote control API and the remote control web interface. And then also I've got a little MIDI controller here that we're going to set up the MIDI buttons to run some actions. So if you want to use MIDI, you can load up MIDI, but if you have something, you know, but if you have an OSC controller or something like touch OSC, you can use OSC as well. They're both very, very similar. There's also DMX support for remote control if you want to use that. So in my scene here, I've just got a regular VCAM actor. It doesn't have to be a VCAM actor. It could be any sort of actor to work with remote control. So let's go and create one. So, uh, so once the plugins are loaded, you'll see this menu come up, remote control preset, and you can call this whatever you want. Let's go ahead and open this up. And you'll see this interface here. So once you've made a remote control preset, if you pull this little line out like this, you'll see all of these little closed eyes. And, the, and if you hover over it, it says expose this property to remote control preset. So as a simple example of what you can do with remote control preset, let's go ahead and set the manual focus distance. So if you see these three dots here, that just means there's more than one thing kind of stacked in there. You, you can pull it out if you like, or if you see the three dots, you can just click over it. You can pick which one you want. So let's go to expose property. Now, if you don't have a bunch of logic that you want to build into this, Remote control is great. If you just want to use a MIDI controller or an OSC controller to control just straight attributes on an actor, remote control is, is definitely way easier than jumping into blueprints and building your tool out using the MIDI blueprint library. So here we just went and we exposed it and it popped up into our GUI in the remote control. So now if you go to protocols, you'll see that we have an add binding. With this selected, just go ahead and add binding. It'll automatically add a MIDI here. If you had a DMX and OSD and MIDI all enabled, then you'll get to choose. What's also nice about remote control is, you know, sometimes it could be a challenge to figure out, you know, what channel your MIDI device is under. And, you know, you would have to go into your software here and click in here and say, okay, this is channel one, this is channel two. What's nice about this, and I'll turn on my camera so you can see the MIDI device here. There you go. What's nice here is if you click this little record button and then you nudge it, it'll show ex exactly what device uh, that you need to put it under and it'll automatically set it for you. Just make sure you turn off the recording after you're done with that. So here it says that we're on monogram MIDI and then your you wanna set your min and max for it. So we'll just set this to something like, you know, 500 and then this is something like 1500. So you'll see now over here, when I'm changing the wheel, you'll see that the focus distance is going in and out. And let's turn on the debug screen. So you'll see that it's now going in and out, right? And we set this up with like five clicks instead of, you know, having to go into blueprints, make a blueprint VCAM actor itself, putting a bunch of logic in there. So again, if you just want to control an attribute, then remote control is definitely the way to go. This is an example of a wheel. What if we wanted to hook up one of our buttons here to this draw debug focus plane? So simple, just go to the same thing and we're going to expose it to the property. Now, one really great feature about the remote control I want to point out is the log. If you ever do any development with blueprints or with Python, this log can be very useful in and of itself, even if you don't plan on, you know, connecting it up to any sort of mini device. When you go and you add this, you expose the property. If you look at the log, it tells you two very important things if you want to mess with any of this stuff in Python. One is it tells you the exact attribute name in the C++ code, not the label that's here. And you know, if you've ever tried to do this before, you know that sometimes it could be a challenge to figure out exactly what the name is based off of the label. Sometimes you have to like jump into Visual Studio and jump into the C++ code to figure it out. And then the other thing is it tells you the exact address within inside the engine. 
which again can be sometimes a struggle to figure out uh, where it is when you're trying to call things in Python. So this log can be very, very handy. Anyways, let's turn the log off. And we'll go here and we'll click on protocols and we'll add a binding here. And now I've already gone in here and set up my, let's just use button 12, 12 to be a toggle. So what we'll want to do is let's click record again. I'll, I'll turn on my camera and which one was 12? Let's see, the top one. So hit record here hit the top button and you'll see that it, that it already goes to 12, right? So we want one to be off and one to be on. So let's try it. See how now I'm hitting the button and we're turning on and off our debug plane. Yeah. So you can have a MIDI controller like this sitting out on a virtual production stage. You know, if you're just, Kind of like one person trying to do all of this stuff and you can't yell back to an operator you know something like this can be really handy assuming you have maybe a long enough cord uh, or you're using touch osc now let's say that we wanted to trigger a take record here something that's not necessarily just just an attribute on an actor what you can do is you can make a editor actor utility and you can put some logic in there and bring it in there and we'll show you how to do it so we'll make a blueprint and select editor utility actor. And then you can name this whatever you want. Now let's dive into our blueprint here. Go to event craft and any of this stuff. Let's make a custom event. Here, you can name this whatever you like. And in here, uh, let's just go to open take recorder. And then let's start a call. Compile this. Bring our remote control back in. And what we'll do is we'll drag this into our scene here that actor, you see that under functions, if you go to actor function, you will see our, our editor actor utility in here. And if you drop that down, you'll see the custom event that we just made. So now you can click this and assuming you have something in take recorder, you'll see that now it's take recording. Now, how do we get this to hook up to a MIDI button that we have? Currently, you can't bind a custom event straight to a MIDI button. We'll probably end up adding support for that in a future release of the software. But we can kind of hack around this a little bit using the construction script and some Booleans. So let's, I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. Now, if we go here, let's add a branch. Put this on false. Here, the condition is going to be recording. So what we're going to want to do here is be able to hit the button and record and then hit the button again and have it stop just so, you know, again, you don't have to run back to the engine. So we're going to do stop recording here. And then we're going to put this behind a branch in the construction script, and then we're going to toggle the condition of, of the branch. I'll show you how to do that. So let's just make a Boolean here uh, and you can name this whatever you want. Make it public so that it shows up on the actor because this is gonna be the attribute, the attribute that we expose to remote control. Uh, hold on Alt, drag it in for a set and we'll just keep this set to none. And then also the default of this Boolean, have it set to none. Then go over to the construction script here and we'll pull out a branch. And then this will be our condition. So hold down control, pull it in. And then let's call that actor or that custom event, which was what is uh, record TC. Okay. 
Awesome. So the logic for this is if let's compile this. I'm not sure. So the logic for this is if we toggle this to true, it's going to run this event. And then based off of if we're already recording or not, will be which chain it goes through. So if we're not recording, it will open the tape recorder panel and it'll start a recording. But if we are recording, then it will stop the recording and it'll set our variable back to false. So let's go ahead and try that. So now that we have this, let's bring back our remote control panel and we've got this run recording. Let's expose that here. And now we can bind that. So let's hit record again here. And we want to go to 11, which is the bottom button. So let's record, go to 11, stop recording. And you see that it already triggered a, top, a take record. So now we should be able to hit the button again. So let's try it. Let's hit the button. And we'll see that we're running a take record. And now let's hit the button again. And it stopped the take record. Great. So that's just kind of a hacky way to get around not being able to call a function directly on the MIDI controller. So those are just some quick examples on what you can do with remote control. Now, another really, really, really awesome function of remote control is this thing called the web app. So if you click on a web app here, and let me drag the web page over and you just click on uh, build your own UI or it doesn't matter actually. So if you go to the design phase here and if you go to the presets tab, you'll see that these are all of the remote controls that are in the project. We were working on one that said uh, RC recording. So if you select that and you go over to properties, you'll see everything that we've added here. So you can drag all of these in now. All right, so we can put our debug and you can put them in, into kind of new containers or into existing containers. You can, you know, kind of organize them however you want. And then th with this here, you can actually bind to an event here. You don't, you don't have to kind of, you know, do this Boolean on off uh, trick that we were doing before. So you can actually just delete this. So now here, if you click back to control, let's move this out of the way. Where did our web page go? Here. So now, oh, we need to change this to a slider, actually. Let's go back here. Let's change this. So this is already a slider, but what we need to do is we need to set a min and max for the slider. There you go. And you'll see the slider show up there. So I'll go back to control. And now if we turn the debug close on, you can see that we're pulling this in and out using a web page. Pretty cool. Now, an even cooler thing about this is if all of your devices are on the same network, the same Wi-Fi or the same network, you can have an iPad or an iPhone or you know any sort of smart device out there on stage as well. And you can get to that from here. And I'll show you how to do this. The first thing that we want to do is we want to pay attention. If you go into the project settings and if you go to the remote control, the remote control web interface port, you want to pay attention to that, right? And right now mine is set to 30,000. So I've got my iPad here. And in the address of the iPad, if you set the address to this machine's IP address and then colon that port, which was 30,000. So if you look in this one here, it's just using the local host. So just replace this on your iPad with this machine's IP address and then colon 30,000. And then on your web page, if you go to design, if you go to design and pick the preset that you wanted, just like we did in the regular web page. And then if you go back to control, you can see that now we're controlling the engine with an iPad. And you can run a tape recorder. So there's multiple ways using remote control to be in the middle of a set and control things if you don't have a large capture team. You can also use iOS apps. There's lots of MIDI or OSC iOS apps like Touch OSC. 
and you can set up your own little, you know, kind of interface on your iPad using buttons and then hook up those buttons to Unreal Engine using the remote control plugin like so. So hopefully that was helpful and that was informative. You'll see that there's numerous ways that you can use this plugin. It's, it's um, very, very valuable in a virtual production context.